Welcome mm. to the Team Bobber podcast. It's me, Stevie, and today we've got the usual guys, Larry and Barry. And today we're going to be going in a different direction, talking about real life topics. Today's topic is going to be called, Is the World on the Brink of World War Three? Now, we're going to stick to one hour timer where Larry's going to be standing by with a, a countdown for one hour. Are you ready with that, Larry? Yeah. Here's a so, three, two, one. <laughs> and then when when we get to the uh, the timer goes off, we're just going to be stopping and then we're going to be ending the podcast and hopefully we'll pick up. If it's a really good subject, we'll continue in the next one. So, yeah, we'll start the discussion then on three, two, one, go. Yeah. Well, we so, we're off and running. Right, so morning, guys, morning, morning. Let's morning. get on with this discussion then. So, the the reason why we picked this discussion is because you know nobody really knows what's going on in the world. They've attempted so many times to try and start a world war somewhere. Going back from I can remember when I was at school, um, but what's going on at the moment? The, the, the biggest one of all, of course, is what's going on in Ukraine. And they're trying to do whatever they can to try and tempt countries into, I wouldn't say probably not as far as nuclear war, but they're trying to get something going, aren't they, guys? Well, what, what do we, let's start off with what do we think? Are they going to achieve World War Three here in the next year or so? What do you boys think? Um uh, really capable of taking it that far. I don't think I think they're just like many since the end of the Second World War. I think they it's all about money and power and changing legis- legislation in it and maybe um our rights. That's what it's always been. The since the end of Second World War, we've had loads of little wars which you know, what was the biggest one when we was kids? It was the Cold War, wasn't it? I don't know if you guys remember. I remember it very well. There were We were told at school that if we hear the siren go off, we have to get under the table because <laughs> that means we're just about to be bombed yeah. by Russia. Yeah, that they was made one. It was mad for me. You know? And I was, when I was a kid, you know, I was, you know, you don't really fear much, much thing. When they show you the images, what things can happen, and they show you images of like what happened, you know, in Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and things like that. You think, wow, you know, this is what could happen any minute. And of course, the bad guys were Russia at the time. You know, we we believe what we're being told that they're bad because they put it in music. Do you remember the um, oh, what was it called that two tribes go to war or something like that? Was it sounds yeah, like it goes to Hollywood? There was yeah. that. They made movies about it, one called War Games, which had some kid that yeah. was a hacker. Do you remember that? They did so many different things. Rocky to Ford. try and mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And these are the things that they did back then to keep us in check, to say, look, did, where are you? you, know, you where did, oh, so, Sorry, did you boys ever really buy into that Cold War thing, though? I, I can't say I did as a kid. I, although we would, you know, that they drummed it into us, like you said, that they taught us what to do in the event of the four minute warning go, get under your school desk because a, you know, a desk has got to save you from a nuclear blast, in it? Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I never really believed it. So, and it weren't, it was a cold war. So, I mean, what does that actually mean? Is that, that just means like there's, it, there's a war going on apart from like frontline shooting and killing each other, but all the spying part of it was, was happening. And, and obviously people were being killed, like doing stuff like that, but there weren't, there weren't actually soldiers fighting each other. I never really I believed there was a threat from Russia really, but then I never thought about it. As a kid, you don't really want to think about that, do you? Mm. You, and you can't really wrap your head around it anyway because you're a kid. You can't understand all that sort of stuff. I think I'll busy out. You, playing hide and seek and shit like that. You what? 
I was busy outside playing hide and seek and stuff like that. That's what I mean. I think the Falk- the Falklands War was the first real war that we encountered. Um, although Vietnam was like the end of Vietnam was going on in our lifetime, but we weren't involved in that. So I don't remember any of that at all, like being on our news or anything. No, I don't. Do you boys remember any of that? What, no. Vietnam? Yeah, because that, fit, that no. ended in 70. Four was it something like that? Yeah, or well, five then. So no, I yeah, think. I'd, oh yeah, well, I don't. I don't remember much too. about that. But the going back to the Cold War one, I think the reason why I used to get afraid is because my dad used to terrify me about what could yeah, happen. Well, there we are. And see, this yeah. is where we're at now with stuff going on in the world. People are so like brainwash about stuff and then the kids see the parents like for argument's sake putting a mask on and then you yeah. see kids walking to school in yeah. masks still it is it's heartbreaking it's all because of the parents yeah. so your your dad bought into it stevie and then that rubbed off yeah on you then. he was he was a massive sun reader for those people that don't know what it is it's a quite a tabloid newspaper in the UK where um, basically anything on the front page is meant to be there to like catch your eye. And it basically, it just terrifies you, doesn't it? They've just put anything on there or Russia's sending their ships into the UK or whatever. And they've got these, it's like dramatic thing on the front. And my dad, you sit there like saying, Hey kids, come on, you need to learn about this. This is what could happen. And you know, this is a really serious time. And you think they're going like, Oh my gosh. You know, I can't remember how old I was. I think I must have been, I can remember it. I was about eight. I remember my dad telling me about, you know, what could happen and that the Russians are bad and all this lot because my dad was brainwashed by the media. He'd watch the news at ITN News at 10 with Trevor MacDonald. He'd watch the one during the day. It's not, we didn't have the news channels like we've got today, like the CNNs, Fox News. You just had your news channels that was on like maybe three times a day and everyone would like be there. You was at 10, wasn't it? Everyone would be like watching it, the parents. Mm. And there'd be so much drama on there. Of course, I'd be in bed by then. But the ones that was on, you used to have John Craven's news round. Even he was putting in the fear into you as a kid. See, I don't really remember any of that. I just didn't, I never believed it was going to happen. Even though at school they were telling us all that stuff, yeah, I never really believed it was going to happen. It's probably your intuition from a very young age, and mate. Or do you think did your did your parents do anything? Say, were they no, a bit never, like mention, never mentioned. Never no. mentioned it. It's good, mate. Never mentioned yeah. it. What about you, Baza? Same. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Yeah. Never. Never mentioned. Never discussed. Never talked about. Never. Uh, sat down and said, "Make sure you watch this and make sure you learn this." Um, it, it, yeah, you know, never, never happened that. Funnily yeah. enough, I've just been thinking about that. Then that's why. Well, that's why I was quiet, <laughs> trying to think back as to, as to what was said, and I do not remember anything being said about that. I think it's maybe to my dad I, I was a very. So go on. Yeah, going back to that Cold War thing, my, my thoughts about that—the Cold War. I always thought it was because you were told that Russia was a cold place. And it was just full mm. of snow. And that's, yeah. that's the reason I thought it yeah, was a cold I, war. Yeah, you're right. That, yeah. that I, is I similar so. to what I thought. I didn't really know what a cold war was until no. a few years ago. Mm. I didn't know what it was. I, I didn't really understand what that cold meant. Yeah. But it's weird how they put these names, don't they? The name wars. Like, <laughs> some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't. I, I remember when the Falklands War broke out because mm. young kid, you don't understand war. I knew because we were taught about World War Two yeah. in school, primary school and that. And my old headmaster, he served in World War Two, and he used to tell us stories about things he'd done during the war. So I knew that people, ordinary people, got called up and had to go to war when war broke out. And I remember, I still remember it now, that I, I'd i seen that we were going to war with Argentina 
and Maggie was sending all these uh, armada of boat or ships and that destroyers and stuff over to the Falklands. And I remember being upset one night, going to bed, thinking that my dad was going to have to go to war. And I remember he sat me down and said, no, that's that's not going to happen. That was my first real thought of about war, really, was was the Falklands, which was 1982, wasn't it? Yeah. I think yeah, the first one it was. Yeah. Something like that. 81, 82, I think. But I had not never really thought about war apart from just the history of it, like when we were taught about World War Two. But then because, like you touched on there, Stevie, we never really had news channels much back then, and they never covered it. You you get a little bullet in at six o'clock, and that's all you'd get, like a little update. But the first real war that was properly covered was the Gulf War mm. in what was that, nineteen ninety, weren't it? That was probably down to yeah, the all the war. news stations that we had at the time, though, didn't we? Like you we said, were, was, but was it was con no dedicated Iraq. channels. Were no, but what I mean by the Falklands, you never got to see actually any footage of, you know, they didn't have uh, cameramen on the ground collecting it and putting it out on the six yeah. o'clock, really. But with the Falklands, I remember, bit, uh, sorry, the Gulf War, yeah. the first Gulf War, I was obsessed with watching all that aerial image of missiles going into buildings and blowing the heck out of them. Mm. It fascinated. Remember the footage of, them. of the Belgrano being sunk. I remember. I remember the footage of that. Yeah, but so the, was the that at the time? Footage. though? yeah. Was that released at the time or after? Yes, it was. Yeah. See, I again, that. I was I was probably a bit too young to see all that back then. <laughs> well, I put, I didn't watch the news. Yeah. I was too young, so I probably missed all that. But I remember that first Gulf War was just on the news all the time. And I was obsessed by that. I absolutely was obsessed by it, watching all that stuff. I remember I used to go out with me mates, like, you know, after work, and I'd come home, and I'd just put the, t- the TV on in my bedroom and watch the news and all these, all this footage of missiles blowing up, and they used to give you daily counts of how many aircraft, our aircraft had gone down, how many pilots and navigators had been captured. Do you remember them two, them tornadoes? What were their That's names, right. them boys? John yeah. or someone, wasn't it? I can't remember their names. They were the most famous, weren't they? Didn't they parade yeah. them on TV and one was all beaten up, weren't he? Mm. I don't remember oh, those two, yeah. Their name. Nickel, was it? John Nickel or someone, one of them? All that, I was absolutely engrossed in it, in that war. I was fascinated by it absolutely fascinated by it um obviously have as you remember, you, have you remember well, that his name's adrian adrian john nickel <laughs> yeah. yeah i do yeah. remember that one mate <laughs> john nickel was the navigator what he he was a uh, co-part or what oh, they were they both the in the same plane were they Oh, yeah, 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 the tornado will have two in. They have a pilot and then one behind him, the mm. navigator and probably weapons. John Nickel mm. was the um, one sat behind, I think. Am I right? Pastor? John Peters. John Peters was the, yeah, core pilot was John Nickel. Yeah. John Peters was the pilot. The, the curly head pilot. Boy. Yeah, yeah. Curly but, head but looking boy. at it, that, that's weird though, if you're if just looking, quick looking at that. Um, John Nicol, who was the co-pilot, is the one that gets mentioned. He's the one yeah. that, that, that came on and did all the interviews afterwards and everything. And yeah, that's right. Talked he about still it, does it today. He'd become that's a celebrity, John, John didn't he? John Peters didn't. But why no, didn't John he, Peters? Well, I think, from what I can sort of make of it, he just didn't, when, he got, when they got released, he didn't like all that public attention. He just wanted to get them. Right. Um, Get if thankfully he was still alive because they, they had been mm. knocked about. I don't know if he got them injuries. I can't remember if he got them injuries when they ejected, though. He may have got yeah, some well, of them when he, when he ejected. It says they were pistol whipped. Ah, um, right. Yeah. 
But I do remember them putting them on. I think they put their faces on TV, didn't they? But all that really fascinated me because then you had all the SAS lads, Bravo 120, Bravo 20. Hmm. They got caught and all that story. And uh, I was just so fascinated by it. It really did fascinate me, that war did. Um, what what about you boys? Did you take much notice of that war or or what? Baza, do you want to go first? Well, um, personally, no, not really. Um, yeah, I knew it was going on. Um, I've never been. It's funny because when I think back as to being a kid, I, I never. I never played soldiers. I never ran around with a stick going, <laughs> I never played army. I was never into that kind of thing. Um, so maybe that meant that as I grew up older, I, was, I wasn't really bothered about knowing about that kind of thing. Hmm. I don't, but no, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't obsessed with anything like that. Right. I think with me, I was more, I was probably pulled into it more again from my dad because I was still living with my parents then because I think I can't remember what, I might, yeah, I would have been about 12 or something like that. Yeah, so I do remember it. Um, dad would always have the news on because that, I think around that time is when we had Sky. Yeah, we had Sky. So dad was like, get home from work and he'd be there straight on Sky News. And you just see some news, some breaking news had happened and things like that. And a bit like you, I was a little bit fascinated, but on the other side, I was a little bit afraid because I, I actually, because I've been programmed of what happened during the Cold War, Falklands so War. So are you talking Falklands or Gulf? Here? No, Gulf. Gulf. The yeah. Gulf. Not Falklands, I didn't. I think with the Falklands, um, I just used to see the like bit like um, what Barry was saying about the ship, you know, going down. I remember that. And I remember a load of mm. um, Argentinian soldiers being marched across yeah, something when they green, surrendered. was it? What was that area called? Goose Golden Green. Green. Goose Green, that's it. Go- I just remember green. them. And there was, all, there was they put it in the papers as if like, oh, there was like holding up, hold, hugging the British soldiers, say thank you for saving us or something yeah. like that. And all that. I just remember that. But... Um, the Gulf War, I do remember it. I was kind of like, a bit like you, because I was thinking, well, I don't want the war to happen here. So I'm hoping, I know it sounds horrible, but you think at the time, I just want it to be over there, you know, and you kind of want to keep up with what's happening. So I, I was like, out of mind, didn't it? Yeah. I, ne- yeah. I knew that was never going to creep this way at like- night. Um, Because if you remember, they invaded Kuwait, didn't they, Iraq, in, I think it was August. Now, I was was having this conversation the other day. I can't remember if it was August 89 or August 90. I think it was August 89. I'm not sure. It's either 89 or 90. Hmm. They invaded Kuwait, and then they were negotiating for months afterwards. Because can you remember, they were our media at the time believed it. Our media were coming out with stuff like uh, Saddam's soldiers, uh, his Republican guard were, were going into children's hospitals and killing babies in incubators and stuff. And also mm. they were feeding uh, Kuwaiti people in uh, uh, wood chippers. 2nd of, uh, of August 1990, that one. 1990, yeah. And then the war oh. started in January mm. uh, 91. Because Maggie Thatcher stepped down, didn't she? After after they'd invaded, and between that and them going in, um, John Major took over. That's so he right. was actually Prime Minister when the war actually started. Because mm. they did an air war for, oh, I don't know, they were probably bombing them for about a month or something. Because they wanted to uh, reduce the... Because at the time, Iraq had, I think, the fourth biggest army like in men and heart military hardware their air force was was quite big it was quite lethal yeah. so they spent about a month to six weeks smashing the hell out of iraq and destroying all their infrastructure all their air air 
ability to um, put military planes in the sky. And then once they done that, they then sent the, the ground troops in. While all this is going on, the SAS and all the um, American special forces and Australian, New Zealand, Canadian special forces, they're all in uh, behind enemy lines, like weakening. They were taking all the scuds out, weren't they? The um, because they were desperately right. trying to to pull Israel into that war. Because if they could mm. pull it, see, this is all linked to the to today, really, because they the the Iraqis wanted to pull Israel into the war, and then that would have triggered other uh, countries Muslim coming. countries yeah. in that area to then come into the war on the side of Iraq. Mm. And if you can remember, they were sending scuds in uh, Israel all the time, and that was what the special forces job was, getting in there and and taking all them scud sites out. That's that's how the uh, Bravo 20 boys got caught. That's what they were doing, Andy McNabb and his mates. Mm. Um, they, They got caught trying to do that. Um, so they were sending scuds in uh, Israel constantly, and they had a, I don't know if you remember, they had a, America put a Patriot system, that was called, and that was like um, like a missile defense. So that would, you know, when they detected a scud, they would send a, a defensive missile up to take it out before it, you know, could hit its target. That was, mm. I, I can remember it was called a Patriot system. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I do remember that name. Yeah. Um, so oh, it was, it really amazed me. And then once they softened them up, once they'd fit, totally, you know, removed, because they pushed them out of Kuwait fairly quickly. Yeah, that's right. So once they'd, we, when, once they'd, like neutralize their ability to put planes in the air. They then said, "Right, ground war," because that is old Norman Schwarzkopf, weren't it? The, <laughs> yeah, the name of the right. general. Yeah, and and our guy was called uh, Debilier or something. What he general someone Debilier. Um, so then they sent the ground troops in, and they totally smashed them within forty eight hours. They just pushed them out of Kuwait, um, pushed them into Iraq. And they should have kept going, but they stopped, didn't they? And that was hmm. the problem. They stopped and left Saddam in power for him to then come back later down the line. But then again, that's all lies, weren't it? They were telling us he, he had went to mass yeah. destruction the second time round. That was after 9-11. Again. Yeah, in 2003, hmm. that one, weren't it? Yeah. That second Gulf War. But yeah, that absolutely fascinated me. That war did, really did. But I didn't know what I know now. All the That's lies, right. all the propaganda, do all that propaganda they feed the public through them news channels, mm-hmm. through them papers, like you say, Steve. It's all. I mean, I remember during the second uh, Gulf War, the. I went in and bought a Sun newspaper before work one morning, and there it was, shock and awe. Can you remember that? <laughs> yeah, Headline, yeah. shock and awe, where shock they'd absolutely awe. smashed the hell out of Baghdad the night before. And that was all on, all over the news. Mm. And Cruise missiles, right? old, Yeah, it was just like Baghdad was on fire, and that they called it shock and awe. And it was all just feeding us just brainwashing in, into support and this is a good thing this is a good thing you know blowing up you know a country on the back yeah. of we think they've got weapons of mass destruction when really they haven't and a terrible way of doing it was that they were taking out the infrastructure for the people like water facilities yeah. electricity and we know that killed yeah. millions of people innocent people and yeah People, they don't, of course, they don't put that in the papers, do they? They put it the other way around that Saddam killed his own people and, and all this lot. All right, he wasn't a good bloke, but are we, we any better? What we did? Were we any better? No. We're supposed to go in there and take a tyrant out. And then what happens? We A load of people get killed in the process of it. And of course, we know it's all about oil or it's about power or someone that doesn't toe the line. 
doesn't want to sell their oil in dollars. They want to sell it in euros or something else. It's massive. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the other thing. That memory in the first one, can you remember all them oil fields being set on fire? Yeah, that's right. That was yeah. another real strong, like, memory in history that was all them oil fields just burning they were burning for weeks and months afterwards weren't they it took them ages to put them out the big oh. question for me is we know what they're trying to do today but what what was the purpose of all that back then because like you said if, if they wanted a world war back then it would have been easy just to let saddam fire his missiles into israel and, you know, that would have created a world war. Because that's why I'm trying to say is they don't want a world war. They want loads of mini wars where yeah. we're the ones that paid a price financially with our lives as well and our rights. Because even if you look at um, after the Soviet Union broke up, do you remember all those mini nukes that went missing, the suitcase nukes? That was all over the British newspaper. They might be on the way here to the UK like fear mm. porn and all that. There's just yeah. no ending to it. I mean, even if we go back to like during the, during the COVID times, there was, of course we had everyone saying it, the, what did they call it? They called it the China virus or something like that, didn't they? Because they wanted to start a problem with China. Like, with it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's right. But then, if you look on the other side, Biden's in now. He's having a dig at the Russians. So they don't want a war, as in like world war. I think they want a war, but they don't want a world war because they know there's no winners. They And we don't even know who's included in it. They, you know, is um, a Russia part of it? Are they like a chess game? Yeah, you throw a few missiles into like, Ukraine and then, you know, we'll give Ukraine some to fire back. We won't get involved, but it'll cause some drama and you get paid and you get this, that, the other. They're, as we know, these people that are putting power in the countries, they're just puppets. Always have been puppets. But, of course, for us, we will always take it out on Putin, Trump, Biden, whoever else, because they're the ones, their faces that are on the, on the media. Mm. Because, like I said, all, what, the only thing yeah, go on. I was just got to see what Baz thought um, about the World War situation. Do you think, through Stevie, you think that it's a big no? Definitely not. It's just keep no. mini wars going on all over the world as many as possible. Um, what do you think, Baz? I think I'm. A, I think I'm on the same same ballpark as, as Stevie. Um, because there, there could have been a world war, um, you know, with this Russia, Russia malarkey, um, especially with Finland and Sweden joining NATO. Um, that's that sort of added a, a new dimension to it. Whereas I think people came out and said that he's not, um, he didn't have any issues with, with Sweden and Finland at all, but then becoming part of NATO has now made him rethink that. Um, he's had to strengthen his borders to those countries, well, to, to Finland. Um, but NATO, NATO's poisonous anyway. We I think we, we, we all yeah. agree on that. Um, they just like to throw the weight around. Um, but but regarding the, the World War situation... Yeah, I can't. I can't see it being a world war. I can't see in the being the being one. Um, like like you said, is I mean, how many wars are going on at the minute? What well, well, we've got? We've got quite a few. I mean, what is this? is that? Syrian war? Is that still going? Uh, well, Syrian. We, well, that's ended, has it? The Syrian well, with ISIS. Conflict, that, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think that's ended. The Yemen so, one's no, going on. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's been going for years. That one. Yeah, the Ukraine one, um, the Russian. I mean, Boris yeah. Johnson, Boris Johnson going over to um, to Ukraine just to convince Zelensky not to get involved in the peace deal. If that is exactly what happened, then then he he wants stringing up does Johnson for that because he's he's got massive amount of blood on his hands for that. 
Um, mm. I mean, we we all know Zelensky's been, was put in there. <laughs> it's a bit. I, th- I think it's a bit like um, Ronald Reagan. Nobody can go from being a television personality uh, to being the leader of a country just like that. It, it just it, it can't happen. It can't happen. Mm. It like Absolutely. Trump, isn't it? What Trump? Oh, about putting Trump in, you mean? Um, well, some well, say yeah, that he was actually he wasn't a politician either. The, a lot of people will say that he was actually uh, groomed to be president years and years ago. See, I, I suppose lot- Amer- America's leaders are a little bit different to ours, aren't they? I can't think. Have we ever had a like a non-political? Prime Minister, well, who hasn't been a politician before? Yeah, it wasn't John Major a bricklayer or something? <laughs> well, they, well, they're all got, they're all got like previous. I think he was a builder, wasn't he? Or something. They, they, they build up to it, don't they? They'll yeah. become an MP and then they, you know, they sort of go up the ladder like you would in any industry or profession. Um, but yeah. Trump, he literally went from businessman to to President of the United States, there was no building up to that politically, was there? I, I don't it's, know. That's unusual, like, isn't it? Yeah. I think yeah, no, he really just entered the right. I think in America, if you want to become president, you can just put your name forward. And like, if you're popular enough, like Baz said, Ronald Reagan, he was an actor, weren't he? And yeah, you know, I mean, that's how he should be, though, thing, shouldn't it? He should be someone on the red button. Someone that. But if that's not. That's not evidence enough that they're not, those are the people are not in control of anything and they're just a front for it all. That's proof enough there, isn't it? Mm, Ronald yeah. Reagan running the bloody biggest mobile, inverted commas, most powerful country in the world. Um, in the Cold War as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 He, he's, right. he's the first American president I can remember, really. Um, I, I remember Jimmy Carter. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I can't uh, remember him. I mean, obviously, I was around then, but I can't yeah, mine was Reagan him. as well. Do you reckon he really got yeah. shot? Do you reckon he reckon that was just another front? Uh, I remember that. I remember that happening. Uh, I don't know. He must have done, did he? I don't know. <gasps> Loads of people so, say that it was um, another front. When it to uh, people get shot for yeah. different reasons, they reckon that there's no way he would have got anyone would have got near him with a gun. I reckon that he was faked. My, I don't. I, I can't I did remember watch why, the film what the that. purpose of it. Oh, well, did you? Well, Reagan there, getting shot. Yeah, there's been a recent film about that, and I I did watch that a couple of years ago. I can't really remember because hmm. I think he did nearly die. There was a point there where they thought he was going to die in that film. So whether hmm. that was that, and where they dramatised it a bit more than it who did they blame was. it on then I can't remember that's what I'm trying to think I think like, it was usually a when they do that a bit like someone, the John Lennon one just a random yeah you know nutcase done it I think because I didn't and like these, the Pope as well when they shot it. shot the Pope didn't they so it was kind of John Paul II oh. oh, do you remember yeah, that I remember that I just got I a know, feeling man. one of Reagan's body George W. Bush hit as well. Yeah, George W. Right. Bush was linked to that, wasn't it? To, um, yep. A few years later, he was linked to the Reagan shooting. He um, was vice president, because, weren't he? Yeah, but I think yeah. he knew um, the family of the man, of the uh, guy who shot him, if I remember rightly. Oh, I didn't know that. So that, that kind of cast mm. um, a doubt over it. John Inkley. I think there might have been the reason why he was shot from what I can remember little bits of the conspiracy things for Reagan was because he was, he wasn't doing as he's told or something like that. And that's what the, you know, it might be a family thing. They went, okay. Don't think they wanted to kill him. I'll have to try and dig that out. I do remember some conspiracy things, but I don't remember. I don't believe all conspiracies. Yeah. Yeah. A bit like that. Don't know why yeah, the Pope, and that might be a fanatic, fanatic as well. <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, that could have been an assassination attempt failure, file. Because I'm pretty sure yeah. one of his bodyguards jumped in the way or something and took the 
I'm sure he got hit just as bad, I think. I can't remember now. I'm sure uh-huh. one of his bodyguards jumped in front of him and and took the worst one, I think. He saved his life, I think. I'm not I might be wrong about that. I'm sure it's our opinions in it, that's all that matters. Yeah. It's our opinions. The people out there listening to this are gonna be saying, You're talking crap, guys. That does not that's not what happened. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I do I just, a bit of research way, into a body. <laughs> I, I just got that in my head that one of his body cards got hit as well. Right, I'm not sure. I won't put money on it. I just got that in my head. I don't know if that's I, right or I not. I think sometimes they also, whenever anyone gets shot, or if anyone's like a victim like in a high power, they become a hero. There's always a hero at the end of it, and mm. it might be popularity. Look, we saw it with bloody Boris Johnson during COVID. That guy didn't get COVID. No, and he's in hospital. No, they go, oh, at the oh, time. <laughs> he was up and walking around. No, but look, I know someone that had COVID, if you want to call it COVID. Some people say it was a flu or whatever. Whatever it is, at the time, COVID, it took them out and it took them months to recover. That mm. Whatever that was back then. My brother had it. And even today. He says that he still can't taste things properly. Whatever it was back then, what he had, Boris Johnson did not get it. That's all I'm mm. saying. But people are going, oh, yeah, he nearly died. No, he did not. Goodness me. There's like amount of that, people that, that come out. It's crap. That was all propaganda, weren't it? It was, yeah. Because I bet, you know, because it's a bit strange, isn't it, if people in power don't get covid but everyone else seems to and of course they, we know they were messing around with what well, the figures weren't 100 percent put out there were they no i didn't get right, it lad. <laughs> right boys i just want to pull it back to something yeah go so ahead. you both think i mean i'm not i don't know what to think to be honest but you both think no chance of world war three but what no. if this scenario happens this year and that is that we've got um trump possibly becoming president again now we know from his first term he become best buddies with uh uh kim jong whatever his name is over in north korea he yeah. removed america funding from the who so he got out of that and I'm pretty sure he did. Was he the first American president to have a face-to-face meeting with a rat? No, no. He was the first American president to have a face-to-face meeting with um, the North Korean guy. But it, didn't he have meetings with Putin as well, didn't he? Yeah, I think he did, he, yeah. He, he got on good terms with Putin. So if he get back in that White House... He's definitely going to pull America out of any involvement in Ukraine. He's going to stop funding all that. He's mm-hmm. going to pull out of the WHO. Um, he's going to probably do good. Uh, um, don't get me wrong here. I ain't no Trump supporter. I know there's, you know, anyone listening to this, I'm not a Trump fan. But I know he will do some good stuff. And he will probably do some good stuff regarding the Israel thing, Israel, um, Palestine thing. So if we sort of get to end of the summer and it's becoming very obvious that Trump should, by a country mile, become president. And if he don't, everyone's going to know it's been rigged this time and it's going to kick off civil war in America, basically. Do you think that they might get so desperate that they might start World War Three in that scenario? I don't well, know. Because what they, they, will, so, they will because, freeze the political situation in, in America to, to stop Trump from getting in. Yeah, because when you stand with that, that, if war is declared with somebody, um, can they change the president? He's saying, I don't, I don't know if they can. I don't know if they would. So maybe that is the only thing that that would stop him getting in. World War Three. 
That's what I'm saying. If they was to kick World yeah, War yeah. Three off, well, it, then possible, elections it? won't happen. They're like, fuck, we can't be pissing around with elections now. We've got. I a mean, World when you look War back at point. Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, she she was she was poking bloody countries left, right, and centre trying to start wars, wasn't she? She she just she was mm. just a warmongering bitch. She just yeah. wanted to have a war with anybody and everybody. Um, and yeah. whether that's financial reasons. I mean, we, we know the Middle East stuff is all to do with, and, and Ukraine, it's all to do with ground resources and controlling populations as, as a whole. Um, you know, the Ukraine thing, they're using that as the energy prices going through the roof. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. It's gone up since then, hasn't it? The UK is still buying oil from Russia. They're not. Yeah. They're buying it from somebody else who's buying it from Russia. Russia but they're still yeah. buying it from Russia. And it's like, what on earth is going on? You know, it, they've, they've, they've all these embargoes stopping everybody from buying things from Russia. Um, but then yeah. all these, you know, high street stores pulled out of, of Russia. They were told to pull out. They pulled out. A lot of them have gone back in under different names. Yeah, I saw that the other yeah, last week, I think. Yeah. They, they've mental, got like it's... McDonald's and that, and they, but different yeah. name. But Called something but is else, it McDonald's yeah. actually behind it? The new one, yeah. Is yeah. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they have um, companies as well. Foot Locker, wasn't it? They changed it to another name, yeah. exactly the same, yeah. selling the same products. Yeah. So <laughs> you know they can do that. I mean, you, you know that I, I were buying Shungite um, for me Argon from there. Um, and, and I can't buy it. Can't buy it. Just can't get it from there. I've got to buy it from somebody in Turkey, who buys it from somebody in Russia now. Right. Has it gone up in so price? Is it well? just, it's ridiculous. Is it just Western countries? Um, yeah, like it's certain countries, that, countries who, yeah. are, who are not like dealing with Russia anymore. Yeah. But that just shows, doesn't it, that it's all a lot of crap. Everything's a lot of crap. Paul because, deal with them. Because they, they, found in, they, they found loopholes to, to still sell products to that country. Like you said, Russia's still selling oil to the UK. Why aren't there an embargo in the UK then for buying still Russia with, for, by a third party? Exactly. So it's crap. And that's why I even, you know, I totally understand what you're saying there, Lazar, about what could kick off, you know, a World War Three, But because of my views on politics, I don't, if they can put in there whoever they want. And if they want a Trump in, they'll put him in. But what do they do? They put the, and I'm no disrespect to American politics, but they put two people in and people haven't got much of a choice to vote for. You've got Biden and Trump. And of course, then they put a load of trash in the news about both of them. So it causes division. I I just don't believe that if they wanted a world war, they could start one without even having a politics thing going on or civil war in the US. They could have done it with Russia right now. So Yeah, I'm not I'm not saying they won't I know I know you're not, man. I'm 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 saying they might feel they've got no choice but to start one to stop Trump getting in. I know what you're I also agree yeah. with you, but about it don't matter who's there, they're puppets. But the Trump thing just doesn't quite sit in that, does it? It's like trying to put a piece of a jigsaw and that just won't go in there. Because why did he do some of the things he'd done if he was totally controlled? He couldn't have been totally controlled. He was definitely a rebel. Definitely, because... I mean, pulling out of the who and that. The, he Biden put him back in the who on the day he got in. He put him straight back in there. Yeah, no, you're right. And and started funding them again because he pulled all funding from them. Um, Trump did, and there were certain things he did that he just would not have done if he was totally controlled. Um, but I'm not saying he's a good guy. I mean, no, we no. know he he was behind pushing the the jibby jabby, was he? Jibby jabs. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure to this day, he still claims they are good. You know, hmm. safe and effective. So, 
that Not alone way, for me. It, it could be a yeah, it sure. <laughs> yeah, it could be a, a what do you call it? Um, like you said, you've you've got a power struggle thing going on where they're using yeah. people like that, and then they've it's got there's got to be yeah. really, and if you think about yeah. it, no matter what situation, probably in the animal world as well, you never just get one power structure would you you're always going to get people trying another thing trying to take their place or mm. it's it's nature isn't it it's got to be there's got to be more than one evil fighting Cousins. each other here yeah. i think or be. are they just appeasing a certain popular part of the population there's always going to be um a certain well, that, that's of the part population of that disagree yeah. So if you've if you've got I, I, again, I hate that that phrase, like the c- c- controlled opposition thing, um, because that basically means that you can't trust anybody. Because if you think the people in power are bad, and then you also think people who may be trying to do good are controlled opposition, then that means mm-hmm. that nobody's any good. It just means yeah, that, that everybody me behind it. I don't see that. Yeah. Um, it means they, they, to try and get you to stop trusting anybody. He, he, he will just throw that a, around so willy-nilly. It's yeah, ridiculous. Like, mm. soon as a celebrity wake up, oh, he's had the jib-jab, he's, he's a controlled opposition. I've, I've seen him yeah. ha- out on a night out with so-and-so. He's, he's got a bit... Yeah, but that was 10 years ago. Mm. You know, people can change their minds about things and actually realise they're, you know, they weren't right, you know, what they believed 10 years ago. But they, well, we, 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 all, just, but we were like that as well, weren't we? We forget that we believed in, like, the newspapers and stuff and the media yeah, yeah. or whatever we've been told. So, yeah, you're right, we can change overnight, couldn't you, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. But people over our side of the fence are so paranoid that everyone's bad. The controlled opposition, that they're, they're this, they're that, they're bad, they've got to yeah. be. Yeah. They're, just, they're just so paranoid. Yeah. It's a sad situation. The state of the world really is. It's, is it? Do you think um, it's worse today than it, when it was when we were kids? But yeah. remember, we didn't, we didn't remember. Remember, we don't really know what was going on back then because a lot of it was kind of um, shielded from us from both not from me mum dad told me everything but um i think when i was a kid i mean I, like i said i i when you're children you you don't think of these things do you about all oh, how bad it is but i think as i've grown up and i've looked at you know what I've been through when I was a kid about my dad telling me, "Oh, you know, we could go to war. Nuclear weapons could go off here, whatever." Today, I don't feel fear. I don't feel it. Maybe it's because I look at what could have happened back then and today. I'm thinking, no, they don't want it because they could have done it a long time ago. And I, I don't have that fear of of war, as in a world war. I wouldn't want a war to face what these poor people have feel it feared sorry, faced in other countries. Can you imagine that turning into like um, a Syrian bombardment? That wouldn't happen. Mm. And, I, and the reason, another thing I was going to say why I don't think World War would happen, can you imagine, say like us going to war with Russia and they're totally bombarding us and really close to taking us out? Look, someone's going to use a nuclear weapon, aren't they? So that, that means that everyone's finished. Because when one fires, the other one fires, and then that's it. So I don't think a world war would ever get to happen again. And a lot of it is to do well, with, with there'll that. There'll never be a nuclear war, I don't think. I think the only – if you think of it, you've got some country that, if say, like Russia's going to come in and we're all going to be going back to like some sort of Soviet Union thing. I think they probably could as a last stand and say, well, if you don't clear off – we're going to fire a nuclear missile and start a new. It could probably happen, but I I know what you're saying. It, it wouldn't. I don't think it'd come to that. Just like I don't think there'd be a, a third world war because I think they know very well what they're doing. They want to push prices up. They want us to keep us in chains. 
They want everything to be our rights to be taken away. If they think we're getting a little bit too, you know, powerful, I well, us have a little war over there. And at the same time, let's wipe out some of the history so that people don't remember what's going on in the past. That's what I think what a lot of wars are for. I'll tell, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll just go on off the subject slightly here. That uh, podcast I shared with you boys the other day, that uh, C, what is it, Diaries of a CEO, that Dragon's Den guy, he did yeah. a potty with that CIA guy. And I, again, I didn't listen to it like full attention. I'm always doing stuff when I listen to podcasts. But I think the job he had before he was CIA, before he was pulled in, he had his, he was one of the guys who had the codes to nuclear, to letting off nuclear missiles, right? And he said, basically, we would have like a credit card type thing or something like that with the code on. And his job was just to sit in a room and wait for the call to activate nuclear war, basically. And there was two of them and they, they, they sat in the same room and they had to put their codes in, in exactly the same time for this to what, to set this missile off or whatever. And uh, I can't think of the guy's name, the dragon. He was questioning him about it. Like, how can you get your head around doing that? He, Would you have done it? He said, well, we do it all the time because what happened is they most, they're, they're, they're doing drills all the time to see if they will actually do it. Because what, what, when you guys were saying about World War, and you think, would you have the balls to actually press that button? But that don't work like that. They have two guys sitting there with the codes, and he reckons every country's got this system, and they have drills where they say, right, nuclear war, hit the button, and they have to put it in there and press the button or whatever and hope the best as a drill. And if they don't do it, they're gone and get replaced with people who will do it. I never knew that. Mm. I never knew that. Is Did you it's boys like know war games how they time do time it? Then, isn't it? No. no. It's a bit like that film. That, knew is that. it The Hunt for Red October was a little bit... But they weren't yeah, sure if that was green. a drill. That was kind of like the same kind of thing. Wasn't it? Was it during the Cold Sean War? Sean Connery. <laughs> yeah, yeah Sean Connery, that. wasn't it? Mm. It was that based on a true story then? That film? I think I don't know. I think it might be because I I recall they've done a few um films about about um the Cold War, haven't they? And that was one that stuck in my mind about based on a true story. I'm sure it is. Mm. He didn't he play the Russian that's Commander, right, didn't he? he? Did yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've only watched it once, and that was a long time ago. Um, did they yeah. think there was a nuclear war going on or something like that? And they had to, there was a rogue, wasn't it? A rogue uh, submarine, wasn't right. it? Right. Ah, oh, right. So they had to hunt it before it released a nuke. It is that the ba- base of the story, or was it? I can't it's been remember. Ages, it's been ages since I watched that film, but I remember. Oh, it. that's got that's got to be an eighties film, Matt, isn't it? It's an old one, yeah, uh, probably nineties, I would say. Was it early nineties? Oh. I would say. Mm. Just looking yeah. at this, so, uh, Hunt, for, Hunt for Red October, um, and it went missing on March the eighth, nineteen sixty-eight. This uh, submarine. Oh, was it? Nineteen sixty-eight. Yeah, so based on a based on a true story. Wonder. Yeah, I thought it was. It well, is, when uh, was the film made? Uh, 1990. Hey, you get in. I'm not that bad, then am I, with dates? <laughs> I was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, that was so, cool. there's been, there have been some good you know, films that are based on true stories. and I know they have to beef it up a little bit, don't they, to make it more entertaining. But... When you watch them, you just do you think like they're just trying to um what's the word? Pre programming you to think that, you know, we always stop the bad guy, as in like the governments mm. are trying to I forgot the word that program is predictive programming or something like that, is it? Where they they're doing adverts, don't they? They try and program you because someone's going to yeah. happen in the future so when it does happen you, you're going to really believe it 
So I just think that in the movies, even though that was based on a true story, they do a lot of fictional ones that are very similar, but they change the actual plot of, of the of the movie of what happened. See, I'll tell you what I used to think, right, when I was young. I used to think, what what do German kids get taught in school about World War Two? Do they get yeah. told that what they did was wrong and that they were the bad guys? And then that slipped over into, well, what do they think when they watch all these old, war, old World War Two movies and that, like Guns mm-hmm. and Navarone and all that sort of thing and um, The Dirty Dozen and all films like that where the Americans yeah. and the Allies were the good guys and yet, there's my country, the bad guys. What I wonder, I never always thought, wonder what they think when they watch stuff like that. How does that make them feel? That, that, do they feel like they're the bad guys or do they separate? Like, no, that was our long in our past. We, we're nothing to do with that. I think maybe they, was, so go on. It's, is it similar? Like, cause we've got a bad history, Britain and the stuff we've done in the world but that's so long ago hundreds of years ago is that a similar thing we we never think of that really do we i i the think that stuff they, we've we, done i think the germans you know um are just like us the, the only bad part of it was the nazi side of it all wasn't it because most of the you know the soldiers were just normal men they wouldn't yeah, go out of their way yeah. to like kill children and you know things like that. So I think depends on you know they can't look at that because their grandfathers were soldiers and they're no. That's what they, I think at. maybe they're better. Yeah, they're probably better educated about it. I I I think they know the bad side of it, just like we had bad side of things. We know very well what what we've done in history, apart from. Um, I wouldn't really talk about it at school. I found out later on in life what in history, the bad stuff we did. I used to think, I remember by, you know, I'm not going off topic here, but in geography and history, there was telling us how great the British, um, what was it? What was it called? <laughs> I forgot about it. The, the whole of the, the amount of countries that, you know, we used to control, how great yeah. it was. And that we yeah. helped those people. And I think afterwards I look back and I think, well, yeah, we, we did control a little con- island like that controlled all of that. But no, when you when you look at the history, proper history of what's been told from the local people, you get to find out how barbaric we was to be able yeah. to overthrow countries. We raped and pillaged many countries, didn't we? we, we a lot of it were to do with that East India. Um, yeah, sorry, the wind was... Exactly, British Empire. British, British, British Empire, yeah. Yeah. And, the, you know, the stuff that we did in India, oh, my gosh. And not just that, you closer to home in, in Ireland. I think I watched a reaction video to this. I think of an American um, looking at British history and that, and they were absolutely flabbergasted how much, how, you know, how many countries we've invaded. And I'm pretty mm. sure they said that. We, the British, had in history had it was even bigger than the Roman Empire. Like mm. the amount of territory we claimed as our own sort of thing. Um, it. Yeah, it's it's. We, I think we conquered about a third of the world or something. It's terrible what we've done and stolen. You know. Yeah, we conquered God, those God countries that what. had spears and really primitive stuff it was horrible when it we did mm. marching into like um i never forget that film do you remember that film zulu war do you see that yeah the door, I've, yeah, I've seen door. it but i must admit i was never really mm. interested in going back that far watching war stuff that far but oh it's terrifying to think what i know we were the bad guys in that but to think, yeah. <laughs> think that must have been terrifying being stuck in that camp there Surrounded by and just all them coming over yeah. to war, crikey or Riley. Can you imagine being in that situation? Mm. Uh, L- listen to this. Listen to this. 
Um, during its history, the United Kingdom's forces or forces with a British mandate have invaded, had some control over or fought conflicts in 171 of the world's 193 countries. God. me. But how many did we conquer? Not all of them, did we? Uh, Good question. That is, that is almost a, a quarter of the world submitted to British rule. Mm, quarter, not a third. Right. In 1920, uh, the empire spanned nearly 24% of the total land of the earth. Oh, I mean, that's terrible, isn't it? I don't, I'll tell you what also amazed me about that is that was during a time when we couldn't get troops from aid. I mean, even in the 80s, when we went to the Falklands, that took weeks for Maggie to get our four, you know, our armed forces over there because they had to go over on, ships, a, we? on the ships, didn't they? It took about two yeah. weeks to get there. So that amazed me, like, even like with the Roman Empire and that, how they managed to get, because I, I think the Roman Empire used to march their armies across Europe, didn't they? Oh, also, here we go. Yeah, yeah, they recruited though, didn't they? The locals. Game they over, boys. They, they, used their, <laughs> they used their children, the locals. Full time. Um, stop, stop. How is it? Oh. <laughs> Stevie don't want to know. That's the buzzer, boy. That's the buzzer, is it? Oh, right. That's it's the buzzer. Really buzzer. <laughs> right. Well, there we are. We're well, on the Roman go. Empire. Maybe that's yeah. a good subject <laughs> to start off with next time. Yeah, there's so much to cover, isn't there? All right, well, um, thanks thanks a lot, guys. Is there anything you want to... F- We're not talking about the subject anymore. Anything you want to say before we end this podcast? I don't no, think so. Uh, look forward to doing more. Yeah. We'll try and bang Brilliant. one out fairly regular, shall we? Yeah, that'd be good. Thanks very much, everyone, for listening. I hope you, you like what we the content that we're covering. Please share and smash a like. And, uh, of course, we appreciate your comments. Be kind. Thanks very much, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers, guys. Bye. Cheers.